Uh, come on, fit you. I mean, uh, just you. Just, uh, just, uh, just, uh. Yeah, that's one fine looking barbecue pit. Why doesn't mine look like that? Why don't? Why? Why must life be so hard? Why must I fail in every attempt at masonry? How's your father's project coming along? I think he's almost done. <laughs> yeah, he's done. And so am I. Make sure to check out part one and join me as I show you how I finished my miniature theater right now in part two. I started out by finishing the detailing on the roof. Last week I left these roofs mighty bare, so I'm going to add on some wooden struts on the outside to make it look like there are actual wooden logs holding this whole thing together. I've got little pieces of the balsa wood that keeps the top together, and I'm just going to add them on and then add in some coffee stir sticks to look like wooden planks holding the rest of the structure up. Now, it's wooden planks holding it up, not cardboard, so I get rid of that piece of cardboard holding it all together and add in some more detailed wood. And with that nice and open, we're going to be able to add a couple of ceiling tiles. I'm not quite sure what these would be called. But the main use of them is so we can sit little miniatures up inside of the roof and they can hide up in there. It's not going to be very realistic because it needs to be big enough to hold a miniature up there. With the roof done, I now get to work on the flagpole. I cut a dowel roughly 20 inches tall and drill two holes in it. Into the holes, I put little jewelry loops and use super glue to hold them in place. To give the flagpole a bit more shape, I cut up this little cap and glue that onto the top. I then run some super thin wire between the two loops and thread on my flag. And of course, as I'm tying this together, it takes me too long to realize I haven't put the flag on yet. And screw the flag. Let's go build a door. I cut a piece of chipboard that'll fit in between my little doorway. And then I glue on some coffee stir sticks that have been textured up. I texture both sides and drill in a couple of holes onto the side to put in more jewelry loops. After using super glue to hold them all in place and waiting for it to dry, I add in a barbecue skewer into the whole structure that I can then bend the jewelry loops around to make the door open. I then get to work on the sign that will hang above the door. I cut several pieces of balsa wood to create that supported strut and then drill in some holes so I can add some chain to hang down from it. I cut this old jewelry chain and then add in some jewelry loops into the wood. That way I can hook the jewelry loops onto the chain. Stuff like this is really fiddly and it helps to have a good pair of needle nose pliers. And then locking everything in place with some super glue. I then cut some thin sheets of balsa wood into irregular octagons, which is cutting off the corners to make it look a bit more interesting. And I cut on extra ones to add another layer of depth to the outside. This bends and warps really bad, so I put it between a couple of books to dry. And when that's dry and flat, I add a few jewelry hoops to this piece and thread it on to the rest of my sign. Quickly jumping ahead to the future, after the sign is painted, in order to put the little symbol on it, I print out a rose and then use my X-Acto blade really, really sharp and trace in that shape. And then paint in between the cutout lines in a nice gold. To decorate the grassy entranceway, I make my own flowers. Using this homemade flock, really, really fine, I mix in some really vibrant colors, and that will give me a nice mix to use for flowers. To make the flower stems and to clump them all together, I use static grass applied using my homemade applicator, making little grass tufts that we can then use to glue on our flowers. 
Now heading back inside, we make the staircases going between the levels. I cut out an angled popsicle stick and then cut out inch steps. Just about six of these steps will do. And I glue one at the bottom and one at the top, wait for that to dry a bit and then glue in the in-between ones. Last week, I got a comment from World History Miniatures House asking if I was going to add curtains to the theatre. And I thought that idea was too good to pass up. While they aren't the best looking curtains, it definitely does add a lot and a lot of colour as well. I start by adding these little poles that will hold the curtains on and then I cut little red curtains out of fabric. Using the jewelry loops I've been absolutely tearing through this project, I add in some hoops that will hold them on place and then fiddle around for way too long trying to get them on the pole. And they look pretty nice. I think I might need to take them off and iron them though. Also in the comments last week, I was talking about how this theatre will be used as an Adventurers Guild testing grounds, and Extreme Primus suggested a way for them to escape if things were to go awry. So I made these modular trapdoor tiles to place around the theatre. In gameplay, all of these will connect to each other and a secret entrance in another building in town. Also, keep an eye out in the audience for a special guest. As you may recall, the first floor is raised an inch off the ground. That means to get to that working door, we're going to need some stairs. I just make some simple stairs out of XPS foam bricks that I had cut from a previous project. I then hit everything with a heat gun to melt away any of those strands of hot glue that might be left over. I originally tried staining all of the wood as per a comment that was left in last week's video. However, unfortunately the stain that I had just kind of ended up ruining all of the texture of the wood, which is a bit unfortunate. I ended up going through and using black Mod Podge and just completely covering everything with that instead. And then giving it a paint job similar to my old houses that I did a very long time ago. Covering everything with a creamy colour, I then go through on all of the wood and painted a burnt sienna. To add some more weathering and texture, I cover the white in a burnt umber wash and dab away the excess with a paper towel leaving the corners and edges darker. I then give everything a dry brush of a light raw sienna and that'll bring out the texture of those individual wooden planks. I then paint the roof shingles in a dark green and then dry brush with a really bright green that I mix from the dark mixed with yellow instead of white to give it a more rich color. And in some places at the very end, I just hit it with a pure yellow dry brush. I then paint the gate out the front red, and when all the paint is dry, I start adding the flock. I first add my dirt mixture, which is dirt, sand, and burnt tea leaves, and then I add some static grass on top. And I mix in the dirt all over the place, underneath the stands, everywhere. I add some really fine rocks that are meant for potting to make a little path going into the theatre. With the grass done, I add in our little flowers all over the place. I slip in the stairs that we built. And finally paint the starry mural above the theatre. Finally, our theatre is done. I didn't end up adding chairs because the miniatures take up enough room by themselves. Come to me, the night is dark. Come to me, the night is long. Sing for me, I'll sing along. Sing for me, oh sing for me. Sway with me, we'll make them scream. Dance with me, we'll make them bleed. Oh, sing for me. Listen, do you hear it? Listen, do you feel it? Listen, I'm calling you. Listen, you do know me. Listen, swing and roll me. Listen, I'm calling you. 
Thank you for watching till the end. If you like this video, like this video and subscribe to see more.